Hey, what's happening everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with Nautilus Designs and Training. And in this tutorial, I wanna show you the proper way of how to blur an image in Photoshop. Let's get started. All right, I've got my picture of the South Pacific of a remote beach in the middle of nowhere. And I use this because I wanted to show you details of when you blur it, we can look at these really, really fine palm frond strands. I'm gonna zoom back out, Command-0, and then I go, you go Command-, minus, just to drop it back. The rule of thumb is that you want multiples of 100, not 12.5, but more like 25, 50, 100 in here, versus like 33.3 .3 and 66.6. .6. Whenever I'm like, if I'm at basically 55.8, I want to be in multiples of 100. Now, as I look back before, 12 and a half is multiple, but pretty much I want to be in an even number. So 25, that's an odd number. I can't talk today. Moving on, percentages, yes, 50%. All right, blur tool, that's what we're working on today. There is a blur tool right over here, and it even gives you this little animation if you keep your mouse over it that says, hey, here's how you use this tool. Do not ever use this tool. To me, it's because I can't control the level of blurriness that I wanna have. Now, if I use it here, and I just do it this way, it kinda of blurs the area, but here's the thing. It is basically destructive, it means I can't get this back. And yes, if you are a little more savvy in Adobe Photoshop, you could technically use the art history brush to bring it back but pretty much I destroyed pixels, which means it is considered destructive Photoshop. Let's go back and revert and bring this picture back to life. The first thing I'm gonna do, especially if I have a blur, is I'm gonna duplicate my layer. Now this can be used using Command J or dragging this layer down, and now I have a background copy. This way, in case I ever ruin the background, because at some point you will have to actually change pixels for your blur to work. The most effective way in using a blur inside of Photoshop is up here with filter, come back, blur, and the Gaussian blur. The reason why I don't use this blur, blur more, or average, I mean, these have been around for probably 20 plus years. These are some of the older tools within Photoshop. And you can use a motion blur if you want, if you're creating motion. There's a radio blur, a shape blur, a smart blur, and a surface blur. But the tried and true blur is still the Gaussian blur. And if we click the Gaussian blur, let me move this one over here, you can see my whole entire picture is blurry. Let's take this radius down to 0.1. If you notice, I just changed the level of the blur across the entire image. Versus that blur tool, I had to move around this entire image to get it correct. The reason why I like this is I can control the level of the blur. So if you're noticing, of course, that 3.6 for me is pretty blurry, going up, going up, and whoa, going up. Now, with this, when I say okay, it does lock the blur into place. Because this does affect the whole entire layer, it is technically destructive, but the fact that we have a backup layer down below means that it's kind of not destructive. We can always go back to our original layer. So here I'm gonna say okay at 8.9. And there we go. Now, let's say that we actually wanna keep the beach in focus, but I want all these palm trees to be out of focus. Now here comes the power of these double layers. I'm gonna bring in a layer mask, clicking right here, and now what I'm gonna do, and this is the power of destructive, non-destructive difference, I'm gonna hit B for brush, and I wanna make sure that I have a black foreground. So in this case, if I hit the X key, It'll flip my two colors. And now watch what happens. Oh, <laughs> I turned off my background layer. Oh, there it is. That's better. So now what happens is when I paint through this layer mask, I now can bring back 
elements that I want to be in focus and I can keep the things that I do not want in focus over here on the left hand side. So what that does is it allows me to then paint through the image. Now, of course, I could flip this backwards and I could paint when I don't want to see if I flip the two layers around, but this allows me to blur the entire image and then bring it back. So if I kind of wanted to have this. Now here's something we can also do to make this even more magical. It's basically blur on blur. So if this brush isn't that sharp or you want to even softer blend because a blur will let you blend something. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to create a new image to show you an example of this. So if I'm just going to use that size. Apparently I decided to make an iPhone for me, which is fantastic. So let me just make a simple shape. There we go. So what a blur does, and let's look at the side of this over here, is a blur will also smooth a selection down. Notice what happens. This is essentially blurring it or smoothing it by 8.9 pixels. Ooh, that's a lot of pixels. That's not a lot of pixels. That's a few more. And you get what I'm going from in this case. So if we apply this blur to effectively this mask, and a mask is black and white, black is see-through, white is not see-through, we can do a blur on blur. So now what I want to do is I want to blur the layer mask and this creates even something kind of cool. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do something really, really simple. I'm just going to draw a rectangle and notice now how sharp that edge is. But here's something you can also do. You can blur the selection to create that same effect as right here. So in the filter area, I'm going to say filter, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to make sure that I'm selected not on the picture, but on the layer mask. And now when I go back up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, notice what happened right there. It's kind of hard to see unless I kind of zoom in a little bit. But if I go here, I probably should have done it. You know what I'm going to do? As I'm thinking about this right now. Oh, not that. I'm going to do it in the palm tree because this is easier to see. This is what I'm thinking of. Let's put that selection right there. That's better. Now that's a really, really sharp image. In hindsight, that blue background sky was not the perfect idea. So let's do it right here. So now you can see that sharp line across. Now if I go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, check that out. Notice it did the same thing here. I can't get the layer entitled one. So I can adjust how soft or how hard I want to make this blur. So if I have it down here, now it blurs out 111 pixels. That's a lot of pixels to blur. But the cool thing is you can create a softer effect for how your selection is by blurring the blur. And that's how I like using blurs a lot of times. What I also like doing is the same approach. Let me flip this around here. I'm going to get rid of this layer mask for a second. I'm not going to apply. And I'm going to say background sharpen just so I do not get confused. But what you can also do is that you can use that same layer mask. And what I do a lot of times do a gradient. And a gradient lets you also flow. I didn't look right. That's, oh, I'm not on the right tool. That's better. Notice what happened. That this gradient, this black and white gradient, right here, said blur and then don't blur, don't blur, don't blur, don't blur, don't blur. That sounds like a really bad band name said four times. Yes, there's a band name called Blur. 
I'm not beating up on them, just for the record. So what I can do then is that notice all the power that I have in these layer masks. Let's reapply that. I'll do something sharp right over here. And now that gradient is applied to this image. So the blur extends wherever I choose to make the gradient. And that's how you can fully control your blurs. I usually have two layers and I usually apply it to the layer mask to blend the two pieces together. Now once again, you can always use other tools, but I always go my tried and true system is using that Gaussian blur. Obviously if I was shooting a car and I wanted to add motion, I would. There's a lens blur, which is kind of a radial looking thing like this. I don't really use these that much. You might, and there's a smart blur which takes it a little bit further and says, okay, well, there's a radius, a threshold, a quality, and a mode, but to me, I really get into this. I like something very simple and to the point. And Photoshop made a good blur tool way, 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 way back when on the Gaussian blur. But you can see here how I applied non-destructive techniques while in the very beginning, this little blur tool, wherever it is over here, really made things destructive. So try to get out of the habit of using this blur tool over here and the Gaussian blur up in the filter. And that's the right way of using blur. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also take a look at a few other videos that we have to offer just for you.